Vecfetech, where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. Two weeks ago, I made this video and I posted it on Instagram and on Reddit and it was incredibly well received. It's a creation I made for Mental Health Week here in the UK, talking about feeling lonely as a creative in a world that is rapidly returning back to normal because Mental Health Week was about loneliness this year. I've linked the post below if you wanna check it out and go read the caption where I go a little bit more in depth. Now, more than the average amount, I was asked how did I make this because people uh, seem to very much enjoy this combination of time-lapse and video footage. I've made a video like this in the past, which you can find up here, but this one was done slightly different because now we have a new technology or a new technique or a new tool to use in After Effects. So what you will need to create this, if you want to recreate it, I would actually love to see you recreate it. You need three things. You need a piece of video, you need a time-lapse from the same spot, and you need After Effects. If you don't have After Effects, I've linked a free 30-day trial that you can check out down below, which is one of my Adobe affiliate links. Now, the shooting concept is incredibly simple. I assume some of you have figured it out. I didn't use a green screen, I'll talk more about that later. But the way I did it is I shot a video of myself in one spot, and then I shot a time-lapse with the exact same setup from the exact same spot. The only differences are the exposure settings. As you can see in the time-lapse, I used longer exposures. For that, I used a 10-stop ND filter. If you don't know what that is, you can check out this video here. But that allowed me to shoot half-second exposures with a one-second interval. I then switched to video mode. I ran into frame, as you can see here, and made this looping motion, and I tried to finish at the exact same spot as in facing the camera so that I could crossfade and make myself into a loop as well. And that's pretty much it. Now, how do you combine these two things? Well, that's what this tutorial is about, obviously. We're going to be using After Effects and the Roto Brush 2.0 tool, or pretty much rotoscoping, which is where you go frame by frame and cut out a subject in a video. Now, thankfully, thanks to machine learning or Adobe's advanced Sensei cloud processing, the new Roto Brush tool is so much better at this. As I said, I could have used a green screen to make my cutting myself out much easier, but I don't have a green screen and I didn't want to buy one just for this test shoot because that's pretty much what it was because that seemed a bit wasteful. But yeah, here's how you do it. You open up After Effects, you load in your time lapse, which I've rendered already. I've got plenty of videos about how to do that, but I throw my video file of me standing there into a 1920 by 1920 composition because that is the uh, square aspect ratio that I was going for. You double click on your sequence in your composition and then you click on the roto brush tool and then pretty much you can, with the green drawing, you can click and drag on your subject and if you cross the lines, you can hold alt to remove some of the drawing and it is pretty damn intelligent as you can see, it recognizes where I am and where the edge of my arm and my hands, etc., are. Then you forward frame by frame and you adjust it where needed. Once you're through the whole sequence, you hit the freeze button and this will create a silhouette. It will effectively create a mask of that video. So it cuts out just me and everything else has become invisible as you can see. Then the next step is to load in your time lapse and scale it down or scale it up depending on the resolution that you shot it in. I just used opacity to overlay the, some of the elements in the shot so I could line it up perfectly and then you because you shot it from the exact same POV point of view, it's pretty straightforward. It's just scaling the time-lapse down or up, depending on the res. And then you can maybe add a bit of color grading, which I didn't really have to do because it was shot in the exact same conditions at the exact same time. Some people commented about my shadow. We had an incredibly gray overcast day, so there wasn't really a shadow to think about. The only thing that I spent quite a bit of time on is to figure out which bit of the time-lapse that I'm showing in the back and around me because sometimes someone would run across the frame, which wouldn't look good because then I'd be still in front of this person running across the frame, does that make sense? So I just kind of played around and then I cut the bit in half, swapped them across and then crossfade into the time-lapse into itself. So you have a perfect loop in this time-lapse. I also try to make myself loop, as I mentioned, made the same uh, motion so I could uh, crossfade into myself, but I didn't do that uh, as good as I set out to do. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but uh, you know what? No, nothing is perfect. Nobody is perfect. I forgive myself and you should forgive yourself too. And that's pretty much the tutorial part. It's probably a little bit more easy than a lot of people expected. I don't know, it's, it's very simple. Um, you can try it out for yourself. Now, I've been doing time-lapse and hyperlapse for about 10 years now. And last year, I put a decade's worth of knowledge into a video course, which you can find linked down below as well. If you sign up to my newsletter, you get a nice discount. And if you want to learn everything I know about time-lapse photography, hyperlapse photography, astrophotography, planning great shots, predicting great weather, uh, how to pack your gear, how to do just literally everything I know, you will find in this course. And I think you will very much enjoy it. I've made a separate hyperlapse course 
that comes from some of the chapters in the time lapse course, the ultimate time lapse course that you can check out. And that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, as I mentioned, if you sign up to my newsletter, you get a nice discount and you also get access to the monthly giveaways. This year so far, I've given away a GoPro Hero 10, a license for LR time lapse, a LR time lapse pro controller, and we're planning a bunch more for the rest of the year. So hope to see you on the Time Warper Weekly, which is the name of the newsletter. And if you have any questions or video suggestions, please drop them down below. May the clouds forever be in your favor. I say that because astrophotographers don't like it when I say may your skies be filled with beautiful fluffy clouds. Um, but yeah, may the clouds be in your favor. Maybe it's the new ending line here. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.